because I'm going to use the Bi say, give the first Bible reading, which is from John 16, verses 12 to 15. I have much more to say to you, more than you can now bear. But when he, the spirit of truth, comes, he will guide you into all the truth. He will not speak on his own. He will speak only what he hears, and he will tell you what is yet to come. He will glorify me because it is from me that he will receive what he will make known to you. All that belongs to the Father is mine. That is why I said, the Spirit will receive from me what he will make known to you. May God add his blessing to that reading. And we now have a second reading. Second reading is Psalm 8. O Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You have set your glory above the heavens. From the lips of children and infants you have ordained praises because of your enemies to silence the foe and the avenger. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you have set in place, what is man that you are mindful of him, the son of man that you care for him? You made him a little lower than the heavenly beings and crowned him with glory and honour. You made him ruler over the works of your hands. You put everything under his feet, all flocks and herds and the beasts of the fields, the birds of the air and the fish of the sea, all that swim in the paths of the seas. O Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. The title I've given for today is Our Mysterious God. Because that's what I thought the Trinity was, a mysterious thing. What is it that drove the great explorers to risk their lives to venture across rugged and inhospitable country and sea? What made men like Drake, Cook, Polo, Columbus, Shackleton, to leave the safe and secure and set off into the unknown. No doubt that it was an idea that there was a mystery and they were determined to solve the mystery. And they did it by crisscrossing the world at the risk of their own lives. They wanted to answer the questions like, what lies out there? What lies beyond the known? Is there something waiting to be discovered? Well, these explorers and their pioneer families did solve the mystery of what was out there beyond their patch of land. You could say it's always been the goal of people over the centuries to expand knowledge and find out answers to everything that is unknown. But there are some mysteries that will always be a mystery. Today, Trinity Sunday, we come against one of those mysteries, God. I dare say that it's not very often we think of God as a mystery. Who is God? What is God? Where is God? After all, I can't touch him. I can't say how big he is because I don't know what to measure. I can't see him. If I wanted to take a photograph of him, I wouldn't know where to point the camera. I can't go and knock on his door and say, can I have a cup of tea with you? 
You may feel the presence of God, but I'm never too sure with feelings, whether it's my own feeling. I can't really imagine what God is like because I end up using human pictures, giving him human qualities so that he makes sense to my small mind. I can't think like God because if I could, I'd be able to understand why it was that a young mother had to die. Why thousands of people die in earthquakes. Why a baby could be born severely disabled. And so many other questions which we keep answering why to. We don't, don't often talk about the mystery of God these days. We've tried to be a bit more logical about God and refer to him as a friend, a wonder worker, a companion. We often think about God as being a bigger and more powerful version of ourselves. Some even view God as having the same lusts and emotions as we have. Others view God as a nameless being, playing with us, in the same way in which a cat might play with a mouse. What has happened is that people have tried to fashion God after their own likeness. As human beings, we can't even begin to imagine what God is like. We are restricted to describing God with earthly terminology and so can only express God in the vaguest of terms and be left guessing what's missing. This is the mystery of God, the great God, the only God who is three persons in one God, who refuses to be categorized, who is far bigger, far greater than we can ever imagine, who existed before the world was made and doesn't even need us to exist, The early Christians started talking about a triune God. This wasn't to make God more logical and understandable and acceptable to the human way of thinking. In fact, the idea of the Trinity intensified the mystery of God. They observed that Jesus had a unique relationship with the Father and that the Holy Spirit had a unique relationship with the Father and the Son. Against all odds, against all human logic, the church maintained that Jesus Christ is God, equal with the Father, and that the Holy Spirit is God, equal with the Father and the Son. That God is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit all in one. And because it's impossible for us to do that, it's something we don't really understand. It's a mystery to us. The psalmist can see that God is truly majestic when he says, O Lord our God, how majestic is your name in all the earth, who has set your glory above the heavens. We just heard those words a few moments ago. He looks at the stars and the moon, and these days we could go further and say, well, we'll add galaxies, planets, and universes to it. And he can only conclude that this must be the work of a great God. Maybe you've done the same. You looked at a magnificent color of the sunset, the intricate colors of a beautiful flower, the mountains, the green fields, a star-filled sky. And you've said there, that's proof that there is a God. Anyone who wants to see the evidence of God's existence doesn't need to look any further. But seeing 
God in the universe, can only be seen with the eyes of faith. Those who already know God can see the wonders of nature and they're the signs of God's greatness. The psalmist talks about the greatness of God as a matter of faith in calling God our Lord. Our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. The prophet Isaiah talks about the mystery of God when he says, to whom then will you liken me? Who is my equal? His understanding is unsearchable. Isaiah 40. But we do know more about God. He's more than a God of nature. There's another side to God other than his, other than his greatness. He's revealed himself as God who cares a personal God who wants to have a relationship with his people. From the very first pages of the Bible, we hear of a God who is powerful and great, who creates the earth in just a world, let there be, and it happened. Can you create anything by just saying a word? Now be careful because I have heard the answer, yes, chaos. We also hear about God who wants to be close to his people. God and Adam and Eve were like best friends. They walked in the garden together. The psalmist marvels at the whole idea that this awesome and majestic God should care for someone so insignificant, so mortal as a human race. In fact, God loves his people. A few weeks back, we celebrated Good Friday and Easter. We celebrated the great love that God has by allowing his son to die in a place and to conquer the power that death has over us. He wants us all to come close to him. Something that's only because possible because our sin has been dealt with. We couldn't get close to God while we were still in a sinful nature. We have been reconciled to God. God sent Jesus to restore our friendship with him through his dying and rising from the grave. And when we ask the question, who died on the cross? We answer, God died on the cross. He did the unthinkable. He allowed himself to fall in the hands of sinful people, to be treated cruelly, to be laughed at, to be nailed to a cross. We say, in theory, that's not possible. God, who is majestic and awesome, can't do this, but he did. This is part of the mystery of God. God raised himself from the dead. Last week, we celebrated Pentecost, the pouring out of the Holy Spirit on his disciples and on the church. Jesus said that he and the Father would send the Spirit to remind us of the truth of God's promises, to guide us, to encourage us, to sustain us when the going gets tough. There's nothing more personal than the Spirit of God. He becomes part of our sordid existence in this world. He lives in us, even though we allow sinful nature to take control of our lives so often. Theoretically, it is impossible for a holy God to do. Again, we are confronted with the mystery of God. The doctrine of the Trinity is not an attempt by the church to unravel the mystery around God. 
In fact, it deepens the mystery. It doesn't tell us everything about what God is and who he is. It raises more questions rather than give answers. But it does tell us some important things about God, things that are life-changing. Who is God? He is our Heavenly Father who made us, takes care of us, and calls us his dear children. Who is God? He is Jesus Christ, who gave his life on the cross to re-establish our relationship with God. He reveals the way to God and to eternal life. Who is God? God is the spirit in you, giving you faith in God and guiding you in your daily walk as a Christian. Faith in the triune God acknowledges the might and mystery of God, but at the same time, a God who cares. The psalmist put it this way, O Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth, who has set out your glory above the heavens. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you have ordained, what is man that you think of him? What is the son of man that you care for him? I've met many Christians over the years who have been puzzled by the idea of a triune God. Some, even to the point of saying that they find it impossible to believe. I don't think when we get to the pearly gates, any of us are going to be judged on our knowledge or thoughts of the Trinity. After all, in human terms, this, this is an impossible concept. Let's leave it as part of the mystery of God. But what is important is that in the ups and downs of daily life, we have a God who saves, a God who loves, a God who has gone to extreme lengths to ensure that you have a living relationship with him, a God who cares for you. Our God might be a mysterious God, but he is here and now, and he wants you to be with him in eternity. Let's make this our prayer. Lord God, in spite of our unbelief and our lack of understanding of who you are, show us your way of living. Amen.